In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Now, today's Chaplain's Report, again, because of what's going on in the country, I've decided to kind of temporarily suspend our series on Samuel. And, and it does go back to what we were talking about sort of in the middle of our show, where we were talking about the idea of, of kneeling down before people and asking forgiveness. Of course, only God can grant forgiveness. But I want to focus on the kneeling here just for a second. Let's go ahead and look at a passage that actually does address something right along these lines in Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 through 19. And Paul writes there, Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head, from whom the entire body, being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments, grows with a growth which is from God. Now, despite that being a pretty short passage of Scripture, wow, there is a wealth to unpack in that short little passage. So, one thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is that being defrauded from the prize. Now, what is it talking about there? Of course, in the context, what he's talking about is people that are being led away from salvation, led away from their inheritance in the church as Christians by doing what? Self-abasement. In other words, prostration, humiliation, humiliating themselves in front of something that they ought not be humiliated in front of. In other words, anything other than God. And the second part of that that he brings up is angel worship which confirms what we were saying just a second ago, that the self-abasement that he's talking about is not humiliation or prostration in front of God, even though I think it actually could include that, and I'll get to that in a second, but specifically bowing down to anything that isn't God, even an angel, even if it's a celestial being, a, an actual messenger from God coming to deliver a message, you never prostrate yourself to him. You are a worshiper and a servant of God, not angels, not any created being deserves worship. That is the biblical standard. It has been that way since the Old Testament, and it continues on in the New. So this idea that self-abasement before somebody or worshiping of something other than God is okay is, is biblically completely out of the question. But the reason, that's what I really want to dig into, the reason behind that is, I would say, at the very least, twofold. There's probably actually more reasons for it than the ones I'm thinking of. But what it does is it projects a fake holiness. Because a fake holiness can be something that is done before other people or angels, like Paul is alluding to here, but it could also happen before God. Remember that this is exactly what the Pharisees were doing that Jesus actually specifically pointed out that the Pharisees loved to go out into the square and make a big show of what they were going to do, bowing down before the earth. They had these big phylacteries, uh, phylacteries, I think is the way to say that, you know, trying to speak Hebrew here, uh, in front of their face that had little pieces of scripture on it, and they would have these giant ones so everyone could see it from afar off, and they would wear these long, big robes that had scripture on them, and then they would go out into the village square and they would prostrate themselves, and, and they were doing it in front of God. They weren't worshiping a person or an idol. They were doing it before God, but the fact that they were doing it in order to gain the respect and to gain the worship of other men is what put them in the wrong. They were doing it because they loved the praise of men more than they loved the praise of God. And that's why Jesus actually explained to them and told them that, look, you're not supposed to be doing this for the praise of men. It's supposed to be something that is done specifically for God, and you're failing on that. And so we have to have the same standard here. This idea that we are projecting a fake holiness to other people to try to gain their favor, isn't that exactly what is going on here with the protest? They were wanting to gain the favor of men, therefore we are prostrating ourselves and worshiping in front of something that isn't God? Gang, that's heresy. 
That's something that the Bible is vehemently against. And yet there are people that are, are probably well-intended Christians that are getting caught up in this because of the, that's what the herd is doing. Let's go ahead and, and do as the Romans do. That's not the biblical standard. And furthermore, and I think that this might be an even bigger thing, it plays to this idea that we often talk about virtue signaling. It's something that is specifically done in order to curry the favor of other people. You're trying to announce to everybody else, hey, look, I'm virtuous. It's what a lot of this stuff with people doing the, uh, what was it, the, the whole blackout thing or uh, these different companies trying to take a stance on that, uh, going off the air for, uh, that's what virtue signaling is. It's trying to signal to everybody else, hey, look at me, I'm a virtuous person. It's not the right thing to do. Now, if you are a virtuous person, people are going to pick up on that, but you shouldn't make these big showy proclamations of it to try to convince people how virtuous you are. That's something that the Bible never condones. And I want you to notice that what Paul says here in the, the afterward, he says that it is the result of, because he says inflating without cause, of a fleshly mind. And that's interesting. Because he's saying this idea of, uh, of self-abasement uh, and this idea of worshiping angels and trying to curry the favor of others to appear more righteous than you actually are, it comes from a fleshly mind. That is a person that is focused on the world, not on God, not on spiritual matters. And that's one of the primary reasons that it's wrong. Because it puts the focus on what is going to happen here on earth as a result of your religion as you're practicing these things. It takes the emphasis off of God and what good it does for the kingdom. That's part of the reason that it's wrong. And you'll notice also that he says the result of that is that thinking that doesn't hold to the head. What does that mean, doesn't hold to the head? He's talking about the head of the church. He's talking about Jesus Christ. He's saying being in this fleshly mindset where you're constantly worried about gaining the approval of other human beings, that puts you against the head. That puts you against Christ. Because a person that is spiritually minded is focused on Jesus. He's focused on pleasing him. He's focused on doing what is right for the kingdom, not what is going to gain him the favor of those surrounding him. And the results of this, you'll notice, are going to be division, not unity. Why? Because Paul says in the latter part of verse 19 that the body is being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments and grows with the growth which is from God. See, the uniting of the church, what holds us together, is God, not the praise of men. Not that we think that our, our buddies and our fellow Christians are swell people that we would love to hang out with. Okay, that, that's a good thing. It's not what holds us together. God does that. What holds us together is true humility, true self-abasement. And by that I mean the humbling of the Spirit and the kneeling of ourselves and our hearts towards God. Not seeking out the gain and the admonition of other people. Because here's the thing, if that's what we become about, that's going to cause division. Why? Because there's only so much admiration from human beings to go around and then we're going to be competing with one another to see who can look the most pious and who can gain the most praise from human beings. That puts us in the wrong mindset, and all that's going to do is drive us apart from our brothers. And that's going to be true whether our brothers are the same race as us or different race or whatever. It's going to cause disunity in the church. So if we want there to be unity, if we want to be truly unified, if we want to find that place of reconciliation, we've got to throw all of this out. The only thing that can unite us is the fact that we are all image bearers of the unmoved mover, the one true God that is the Father of all, and that we all have a participation in and an inheritance from Jesus Christ to be forgiven of our sins, all of which we need, all of which every single one of us have fallen short of his glory and are in need of redemption. You see, that concept brings us a lot closer together. Because then we realize, and I'm just like everybody else, I've got flaws, I've got problems, I am not worthy to be in God's presence, and yet because of His Son and because of the redemption He offers, I am. That's a unifying quality. Not what's been going on here. 
not falling down at the feet of people and begging them to, to see you as fit and to unify us, that doesn't work. The only thing that can unify men is God. Stay the course, friends. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.